Hey guys, welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new here. Today's video is going to be tier ranking the 50 books I have read so far in 2024. My reading goal for the year is 100 books, so 50 means I am halfway there and I feel like it is quite the achievement and I wanted to go through all the books as sort of like a midway check-in and I thought that this would be a fun way to do it and I also think it's like a good way so you can visualize each book and you can see how I rank books compared to others. Also, it is only May, which means that I am well Way ahead of my goal because I would be right on track if I was reaching my 50 books towards the end of June so I'm kind of like a full month ahead and Goodreads tells me I'm 10 books ahead of schedule so that is fun I feel like at this point I can definitely say that I will reach my goal of 100 books by the end of the year knock on wood but I think I can definitely do it. Also, you may be wondering why I am in such a weird position. It's because I wanted something to rest my laptop on while I do the tier ranking because I'm going to be like dragging everything and you'll see in a second what I mean, but I need my laptop readily available. I have all of the 50 books in here and we're just gonna go through them and we'll go through my categories as well. So as you can tell, I have five categories. I have my favorite books of the year. I have books I loved, books I enjoyed, books that were fine. And lastly, books I disliked at least a little and I added at least a little because usually I don't dislike my books like most books I have read this year I know for a fact that I overly like majorly liked a few of them I disliked a lot but most of the bottom of the barrel books are still books that I would say I generally enjoyed and liked so that's why I included at least a little because I think that the bottom 10 books will have something I disliked at least a little, but not overall. And that brings me to another thing I wanted to go over. So my initial idea was that I was going to put 10 books in each category and kind of just force it so that I have like my bottom 10, second to least 10, my middle 10, and then so on and so forth. But as I was going through these books, I was thinking, I don't think that all 50 are gonna fit evenly into like the five categories with 10 in each. Because like I said, especially the books I disliked, like I didn't dislike 10 whole books. And I feel like a large majority of the books are gonna fall in the middle of like books I enjoyed, books that were fine, and it just might not be an even 10 in each. So I think I'm gonna go through all of the books first and do like my initial gut reaction to the books. Did I love this? Was it a favorite? Was it just fine? And then after we have the books tier ranked in that order, I'm gonna see if I can try and like weed it down and narrow it down to exactly 10 in each category. So it's gonna be like two rankings, I think, but I think that will be fun because it will challenge me at the end to like make some hard decisions. Also, I'm gonna try and forget my ratings because as I read these books, I give them ratings on a five star scale. One, two, three, four, and five. And I'm gonna try and like forget those ratings. Like I'm just gonna go based on feeling at this moment, not history of what I've rated them in the past. So I think with all that out of the way, it's time to start. Okay, I'm realizing that these books are not in the order that I read them, which I think is more fun. So the first book we have is Yellow Face, and this definitely falls under books I enjoyed. I just read this book, and overall I would say I liked it, but I definitely didn't love it. Like, I thought it was a good, suspenseful book, but I know that it gets so much critical acclaim. Like, it's the number one Goodreads book of 2023 in fiction, and like I didn't feel that way about it. Like I don't see the genius and brilliance or I've said this before, I see it and like I can recognize that it's there but I didn't like personally feel that way about it. Like I didn't think it was brilliant for my personal taste. So I enjoyed it. I didn't love it, but I did enjoy my time with it. Next we have Final Girls by Riley Sager and this is another book that falls into books I enjoyed. Um, also I'm realizing that books I enjoyed and books that were fine are kind of very similar. So. I enjoyed I mean like I genuinely enjoyed and books that were fine I was probably bored a little bit I didn't overall enjoy and it was like a little bit harder for me to get through so that's like the distinction between those two but Final Girls by Riley Sager I definitely enjoyed this book I wouldn't say I loved it I've read two other books by him and I think this might be middle of the road for me it was a good thriller it was like a little bit slow to start which is why I just enjoyed it I didn't love it and the twist like wasn't anything crazy but it did get me a little bit like it just wasn't enough for me to love it as a thriller. For Taming Seven, like, I think I could go and it's either in books that were fine or books I disliked. I honestly think I'm gonna put it in books I disliked, which is kind of crazy because Boys of Tommen is my favorite series of all time, but I definitely disliked a lot about it, where in other books I'm more neutral. Like this book, I definitely like actively disliked. You can see I have a whole reading blog where I included this book and I was ranting on and on and on for like 10 minutes at the end. So I feel like it has to go in this category, even though I did like it a little bit, like there was a lot I disliked, so I'm putting it in there. Also, this is what I mean about how I'm gonna kind of ignore my ratings because I think I rated this book a four star, which means it shouldn't go all the way at the bottom. 
but that's just how it is because I do love this series, so I gave it a higher rating. I like the characters, so I gave it a higher rating, but I also disliked it. I don't know, this is just my feeling and this is what I'm going with. Okay, next is When in Rome by Sarah Adams, and this is another book I disliked. No, not fine. It was a book that I definitely disliked. So this is just a little fluffy rom-com, like cute little fluffy rom-com, and it was just there was nothing to it for me. I absolutely felt like it was kind of a waste of my time. Like I was just reading, but like I was just reading words on a page. Like I didn't feel any sort of connection to it. The only thing, like the only thought I have was that it was cute. Like there was nothing else more. I also think that it happened way too fast. It was like a romance that took place over one week, which I don't like because that's so insta lovey. Like you're telling me these characters love each other after less than a week? No, I'm not buying it. So that's going in books I disliked. Next, we have Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano, and that is going in favorite books of the year, absolutely, because it is my number one favorite book of the year of 2024 so far. I absolutely loved this book. It was a beautiful story, like truly an incredible story. I was sobbing so much. I connected so much to the characters and their lives and their stories. It is a family drama. It is literary fiction. I highly suggest you check out this book if you're like a little bit nervous and you feel like it might not be your type of book. I still think you should read it because that's how I felt and I ended up loving it so much. Also, if you want more of my thoughts on this book, you can check out another reading vlog where this was in it and I talked about it a lot and I just, I love this book so much, so much. Okay, next up is The Psychology of Money, which is the one and only nonfiction book in here and I feel like I did want to include it because it is a book that took me to 50 books, but I feel like, you know, you can't really rate nonfiction against all of these books. So I'm just going to put it middle of the road at books I enjoyed. Although I did really like this book, like I would maybe say I loved it, but you know, I feel like it should go here because it doesn't fit with all the rest of the books. And this was a book on personal finance and it goes a lot into like how people think about money and the basics of investing. And I would highly recommend if you are interested in anything like that. Next up, we have Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. This was actually the first book I read in 2024. And see, like this is going in books I enjoyed again. I liked both Divine Rivals and Ruthless Vows, but I wasn't like so obsessed. I know a lot of people love, love, love this series and at least Divine Rivals. I know so many people love it. Five stars, six stars. They thought it was beautiful, emotional, romantic. I don't really think that. I didn't love the romance. I just thought that the plot and the storyline and the fantasy world and all of that was pretty good. And I know a lot of people didn't like the second book, Ruthless Vows, but I enjoyed it just as much as the first, I would say. But like, I don't know if I would say I loved it. Like it was just, it was a pretty good book. That's how I feel about it. Then we have Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter, and this is definitely going into favorite books of the year. I love this book so much. It is one of my favorite thrillers of all time. It is such a complex, like well-written, in-depth thriller. It's really long, so I think that makes it better. A lot of times thrillers are short. I also think in this thriller, like you have a lot of time to connect to the characters. I literally cried at the end, and I and that's never happened to me in a thriller, so. It was really good. It's also very creepy, disturbing. It gives Criminal Minds serial killer-ish. And it was just so good. Five stars. I loved it. One of my favorite thrillers of all time. And it is one of my favorite books of the year so far. So that is an easy one. Next, we have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Hmm. This could be a book that was fine. I think it's a book that was fine. You know, we might as well just put it in there to get a book in that row. So this book I remember enjoying at first. I thought it was a really interesting concept and all of that, but then it just got very repetitive and slow. And I don't know, just like, I don't think it's my type of book. It's very heavy on like character development and not a lot of plot. It's very like lyrical, poetic, artistic, lots of art and all that stuff. And I know that it's a great book and I can see that, but it just, it was a little boring for me. And I always say like a boring book is like my number one killer in a book. So I would say it was fine for me. Next, we have Caught Up by Liz Tomford. I really, really loved this book. It was an amazing rom-com for me. It's like a single parent romance. It's in the Windy City series. There's a bunch of professional athletes and this one follows a baseball player. I thought it was so good. It was single parent trope. I don't know if I said that. And there's just like a cute kid, cute family. So cute. It made me cry. I finished it in a day and it was phenomenal. I gave it five stars and I think I don't know if it's gonna go in favorite books of the year. It might just go in books I loved because I just feel like my five star silly rom-coms are like a little bit lower than my five star literary fictions. I don't know if that makes sense. I might switch that up, but for now I'm gonna go with books I loved and not favorite books of the year. So 
We'll see. Next is another romance that I loved and that is Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. I just read this book and I have to say, you guys are all right. It was such a good romance. I think it's gonna go into books I loved as well and not my favorite books of the year, but I did really, really enjoy it. I thought it was a phenomenal romance book, like, like romance book perfection. So I think I'm gonna go with I loved it, kind of for the same reason as the previous book, Caught Up. I don't know. Next, we have First Lie Wins. This is definitely a book I disliked. This is such a popular book at the moment. It was like one of Reese's book club picks or something, and I do not see how. I actually think it was a poorly written book. I don't want to say that. I don't want to judge authors because... I mean, like, who am I to say that? But okay, so not poorly written book, but I just noticed the writing a lot. It felt very clunky for me, and I disliked the book a lot because of that. It was also a con artist mystery thriller, and I don't think that that storyline was that good either. So it's definitely a book I disliked. It is one of my least favorite books of the year, and it fits perfectly there. Next up, we have My Last Innocent Year by Daisy Alpert Florin, and this is a book that I enjoyed kind of middle of the road. I was very shocked at how much I actually liked this book. I had never seen or heard anything about it. It is described as sad girl literary fiction, and I think that's the perfect way to describe it. It is kind of like the, it is like a coming of age story of a girl in her senior year in college. It deals with a lot of like heavier stuff. There is a sexual assault. There's a teacher student relationship, all of that. And I actually ended up not being able to put it down towards the end. It was really good. It was short. And it's kind of a book that I can't place why I liked it or enjoyed it, but I did. So it goes in middle of the road books I enjoyed. Next is An Ember in the Ashes, which is definitely one of my favorite books of the year so far. This is a YA fantasy series. It was the first book in it and it was so good. Like I was reading it and immediately I had five star feelings. It gave me all those good vibes of like Hunger Games and Divergent and just such a nostalgic, like fun, young reader feeling and I absolutely loved it. It was one of those books that as I was reading it, I was like imagining if I had never found it and I was like, oh my God, I'd be missing out on so much if I never read this book. So it is definitely one of my favorite books of the year. I think about it very fondly and just, it was such a good reading experience reading that book. And I highly recommend it. I feel like it's an under, I feel like it's an underhyped series. So if you like YA fantasy, I definitely recommend checking it out. Okay, the next book is Funny Story by Emily Henry. And this is a little bit of a tricky one. It's either a book I enjoyed or a book that was fine, but I think it's a book that I enjoyed. I was actually pleasantly surprised. I am not an Emily Henry super fan. I actually kind of feel like her books are super mid, like they don't do it for me. But this one I was pleasantly surprised by and I ended up really liking the love story and just, I don't know, by the end, I actually really enjoyed the book. So I'm not a super fan by any means. I didn't love this. I don't think Emily Henry is like the best ever, but I enjoyed it. This is also in another reading vlog if you want more thoughts. Next is The Push by Ashley Audrain, and I would definitely say I loved this book. This was a really good psychological thriller. It was very much so like creepy, eerie characters. Like you get this creepy feeling the entire time about like what's gonna happen, what's happening. And it focuses on motherhood. I think all of her books do. And it was more specifically the relationship between a mother and a daughter. And I just couldn't put it down. I finished it in almost a day and it was a very unique and interesting thriller. Really, really good. Then we have The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black, which is the third book, I think, in the Folk in the Air trilogy. I always forget the order of the books, but I think this is the third. And this is actually a book that I like was a little disappointed in. I think that it was kind of an underwhelming end to the series. So I would say that it was fine. Um, it just kind of like didn't do it for me. I liked the previous two books a lot more. This book, like I said, was underwhelming. I also just like I didn't love the romance in the entire series and I feel like if you loved the romance you would have loved this last book and I didn't so yeah it was kind of fine for me. I feel like I wouldn't go as far as to say I disliked it but it was just fine. Then we have The Wicked King which is the second book in the series um, and that is going to go in books I enjoy. I kind of feel a little like confused about this entire series like sometimes I was bored reading the books and I didn't find them very fast paced but I did like the um whole cleverness of the books they're very politics heavy so there's a lot of scheming and like deception and lies and all that and I did enjoy that but most of the books I found them to be kind of like a little bit boring and I had to kind of force myself to read them or not force but 
you know, I didn't necessarily like I wasn't being pulled to it. And then at the end, specifically in the first two books, it really shocked me. And I was like, oh my God, I love this, which kind of like made me rate it a little bit higher. But I'm just going to say I enjoyed it. I don't think I loved it. I just enjoyed it. Next, we have Bye Baby by Carola Lovering, and this is definitely a book that I loved. I loved this book a lot. I couldn't put it down again, which is a major sign of me loving a book. It isn't described as a thriller, but I think it is very suspenseful. It's like an emotional drama. It's about friendship. It was so stinking good. Also, Carola Lovering is the author of Tell Me Lies, which was that... Um, I don't know if it was on Netflix, maybe it was on Hulu, but it was like a college drama TV show. And if you've watched it, I feel like you would enjoy this book as well. It's kind of the same vibe, like a little bit thriller, fiction, mystery, drama, friendship, romance, like all of that. Next we have The Personal Librarian. This is a historical fiction. I love historical fiction, but this was like, not like the typical one I read. It is read, to me, it read a lot like a biography. And I would say that I enjoyed it. I don't know if I would say that I loved it, um, it was definitely a little bit slow and not like an easy to consume story. I had to read it in chunks. It was a really good story. I just don't think I loved it. I definitely enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. But like I said, it was kind of like biography style historical fiction, which is just not my like main cup of tea. But it was very interesting. It's a very good story. And it was about the personal librarian to JP Morgan. Next, we have Lizzie Blake's Best Mistake, and this is definitely a book I loved. It's honestly almost a favorite book of the year. This is an accidental pregnancy romance, which I love that trope. I just think those books are so cute. And this book, I just, I remember I was reading it on an airplane and I was checking how many pages were left in the book because I didn't want it to end. And I have not had that feeling for any of the other books listed here, any of the other 50 books. So, I mean, that's an incredible feeling, just wanting more and more and more of the story. And that's kind of how I feel about this trope like I just love being in that story I think it's cute I think it's just gives me butterflies I think that it is everything I also thought the romance in here was fantastic um it could be a favorite book of the year I don't think it is I think it's just a book I loved but I really loved next we have wild love by Elsie Silver this is either a book that was fine or it's a book that I disliked I think I'm gonna go with it was fine because I actually didn't actively dislike anything. It was just very fine, super mid. I didn't feel super connected to it. I read it fast, but I only read it fast because it was easy to read, not because I wanted to read it or I wanted to see what happened or I cared about it or anything like that. And I've talked about this before, but like Elsie Silver just doesn't do it for me. I am not a super fan. I might continue to read her books just because like they are very popular and of the moment. And I also did like one of her books a lot. I liked Heartless. So there's always a chance that I will, but yeah. Most of her books I think are just fine. So that is perfect. Next we have In a Jam by Kate Canterbury. And I actually feel almost identically to the about this book that I do that I do about wild love. It was just like a run-of-the-mill romance, fluffy. I was kind of bored during reading it. I remember wanting it to be over so I could get to other books. So that's really not a good sign. I would say I was a little bored during it, and it's kind of very unmemorable or forgettable. So I did like it at some points, but it was also really long and just like dragged out and you know, you know how it goes with that type of book. So I'm going to say that it was fine. Next is Winter Garden by Kristen Hanna. And this is a book that I loved. I really loved this book. It's a historical fiction. I just love Kristen Hanna's books. I think she does the best historical fiction or the best that I have found so far. And this is focused around World War II and the siege of Leningrad. It was very interesting. I had never really learned anything about this time in history and I really loved it. I was crying so much, more than any book I have ever read. I was a sobbing mess. And sometimes I love that in a book. I loved it for this book. My only qualm with it is that it was a historical fiction that took place a lot in the present as well. And I don't love that. So, but I did love the book overall. I thought it was amazing. Next up is One of Us is Dead by Geneva Rose. And I actually think that this is going to be a book that I loved. Like when I think about it, like when I think back on it, I really enjoyed it. It is a thriller mystery of sorts that like revolves around a bunch of rich housewives. I would say it's light mystery thriller. Like it's not super creepy, intense, scary, nothing like that. It's kind of like comedic, I would say. And it was just so entertaining, so bingeable. It's like a perfect beach read. Like you can open it and finish it in one sitting. And I just thought it was really entertaining, really fun, really fast moving and just I loved it. I really did. Okay, next up is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. And this is a book that I loved. I really, really loved it. I thought it was such a fresh, unique, different, healthy romance book. I absolutely loved it. I love Abby Jimenez. She is without a doubt my favorite rom-com author. I have definitely discovered that this year. Like she is the top of the top. 
Actually, it's between her and Allie Hazelwood, and I honestly can't decide, but I absolutely love Dress for the Summer. I thought it was so good. It also could be a favorite book of the year. My initial reaction is saying that it's not, but when I rearrange it, like this could go in there for like if I need 10, you know? Okay, next up we have Say You Swear by Megan Brandy, and this is definitely a book that I disliked. I have talked about this so many times before, but I really just thought this book was ridiculous. I thought it was written in such a crazy way and like it was just crazy to me. It was such like an unbelievable story in my opinion. It was like very silly and I describe it as ridiculous a lot. It was kind of like trauma dumping. Like there is so much that happens to these characters. It's like kind of hilarious to me and like, I don't know, it's just like so ridiculous that's the only word i can use to describe it it kind of feels like a soap opera but like you know like days of our lives like where people would come back from the dead or like you know some long lost twin resurfaces and gives you a kidney like crazy stuff like that you know so definitely a book i disliked i think it's my least favorite book of the year actually it's not the least but it's pretty close Next, we have The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I've talked about the other books in this series, and this one is kind of like how I feel about The Wicked King. I enjoyed the book, and that's kind of it. Like, I don't think I loved it as a fantasy series. I think that, like I said before, the endings would make me rate it a little bit higher, but I think looking back, like, I just enjoyed it. I didn't absolutely love. Next is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, and honestly, I know I just said that Abby Jimenez is my favorite rom-com, but this book of hers, it was either fine or I enjoyed it. I think it was just fine. I've talked about this book too a lot, and it's kind of a book that I found disappointing because like I said, I love Abby Jimenez. I think she writes amazing romances. This one just didn't do it for me. I think I felt a little bit bored in it, and I didn't like the third act conflict. It was just kind of repetitive, and I don't know. It just... Like I said before, boredom is my killer for books and I was definitely bored in this book and I wasn't so dying to pick it up. Whereas the other Abby Jimenez books, I fly through and I finish in like 24 hours. But something about this one, I just didn't enjoy as much and I feel like it was fine for me. But it does toe the line. I could put it in books I enjoyed, but I'm just gonna put it in books that were fine because I do have like an overall like disappointing remembrance of this book. Next is The Book of Lost Names by Kristen Harmel, and this is a book that I loved. This is another historical fiction that takes place in World War II, and it is um, about a woman who did forgery during the war. It was very interesting, very fast-paced. I would highly recommend this if you're new to historical fiction because it gets right into the action. I binged this book in one day. Next is Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt, and this is a favorite book of the year, without a doubt. This is literally the most heartwarming, heartfelt book you will ever read. I recommend so, 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 so much. It's kind of one of those books that you're not gonna love immediately, but like it's like a slow build to the end where you're gonna love it so much. It was so cute, it was so adorable. I think it's about like friendship and connection and finding connection and people in like unexpected places. It's kind of about this group of characters who are kind of random it seems at first, but by the end they come together. And it's just so adorable. There's also an octopus in it. He is not a main character, but he does narrate some of the story. And it was just so good. It's also a little bit of a cozy mystery. Just five star, incredible book, made me cry, beautiful story. You know the vibe. Kind of reminds me of Hello Beautiful in that way. And I think it's because they're both, you know, fiction. And I'm learning that I do love that genre, even though I don't read it too much. So hopefully in the latter half of the year, I will read more books like that because they happen to be some of my favorites of the favorites because duh, they're in my favorite books of the year. Okay, moving on. We have Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. This is either a book I loved or it's a favorite book of the year. Honestly, I really, really enjoyed it. It could be a favorite book of the year. I'm going to put it in books I love for now. I have a feeling that when I arrange so that there is 10 in each category, it will move up to favorite books of the year. But for now, it's just going to be in books I loved. This is a YA romance or honestly, it's kind of like fiction with a little bit of a romance. And I thought it was so good. It had like little hints of a romance that made it so much better. I thought the chess aspect was amazing. Honestly, this book made me giddy. I loved the book boy in it. Like he had me swooning. It was so cute. Couldn't put it down. Super addicting, super fun all that good stuff. Also, I love Ellie Hazelwood. I think her writing is so fun and funny and quirky, and it just adds another wonderful element to rom-coms. I've said this so many times before, but normal rom-coms just don't do it for me. Like, When in Rome is a good example. I really disliked that book because it didn't have a little extra something like Abby Jimenez and Ali Hazelwood can do. So, check and mate, loved it. Next is Love on the Brain, and I honestly feel the same way about 
love on the brain that I do check and mate loved it same kind of ally hazelwood spiel love her writing love her books also i have a whole ally hazelwood vlog if you want more of my thoughts on all of her books okay next up is none of this is true by lisa jewel and honestly my gut instinct here is telling me that it is a favorite book of the year i really think it is i gave it a 4.5 star rating so not a five star and you would think that all of my five stars would be favorite books of the year but but that's what i meant by i'm going based on feeling like when I look back, I loved this book. It was one of my favorite reading experiences of all time. I read it in like five hours, didn't put it down once. It was such an engaging book. Like it was so good. One of my favorite thrillers of all time. Like honestly, so good. So it was one of my favorite books of the year. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The ending, not the best, but the reading experience was so good. Like I don't know what she put in this book, but it was like drugs. Like I was addicted. I literally couldn't put it down and I absolutely loved it. Like I more than loved it. Next is Grayson's Vow. And you know how before I said Say You Swear was my least favorite book of the year and then I was like, oh wait, no it's not. And that's because this is my least favorite book of the year. I absolutely disliked this book. There was nothing redeeming in it in my opinion. And I have never felt so like, like I am angry at this book. Like I actively dislike it because of the main male character, Grayson. He literally sucked. He was the worst. I couldn't root for him. I couldn't root for their relationship. I honestly think it was toxic and unhealthy. And I do not see how anyone could think that this was a romantic story. So that definitely goes in books I disliked. Next, we have A Torch Against the Night, which is the second book in the An Ember in the Ashes um, series, which I loved that book, the first one. I gave it five stars. That, that's the book I was talking about right here with the um, YA fantasy five star. Now, the second book I just finished like last night, it was my 50th book of the year, and I definitely did not love it anywhere near the first book. So it's not a favorite book of the year. I feel like I honestly didn't even love it. Like, I don't think I'm gonna say I loved it. I think it's just a book I enjoyed, which is kind of sad because it's a big fall from grace. Um, I don't really know what it was about it. I think that I didn't like the storyline as much. The first book was set in like a school, this like war college of sorts, or not war college, like a soldier training college. And I just thought the setting there was really fun. There was these trials that were really fun. The second book was more of a quest. You know how fantasy books do that a lot where like one of the books, the main plot device is a quest of the characters going from like one spot to the next and it takes a whole journey and people helping and problems along the way. That was that. And while I don't love that plot line, I don't think that's why I majorly didn't enjoy it as much. Like that is one reason, but I also just think that the YA kind of shone through for me a bit more in this book. Nothing crazy, I still enjoyed it and I would say it's close to a book I loved, but I just feel like I can't wholeheartedly say I loved it, you know? So it was still fast and adventurous and all that good stuff, but it toes the line, definitely toes the line. Next we have Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin, and this is a book that I loved. It is going in here and I don't know how, okay, so it's gonna be a second row now in that category, okay? Um, I just really loved this. This is another fiction book. Like I said, I found that I am really enjoying like the more literary fiction books as opposed to just like plain romance or things like that. And I really enjoyed it. So it is about the life of two video game developers and pretty much like everything in the human experience. And I really thought it was good. I thought the video game part was fascinating, but I also just thought that like their lives were fascinating and I couldn't put the book down, which is something that happens to me. Like it happened to me in Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano. And I know a lot of people like don't feel that way. Like they think that these books are kind of boring and slow, but for some reason I don't feel that way. And I don't know what it is. I think it's just that it's such like good storytelling that I'm so hooked. Um, and yeah, I really couldn't put this book down. I loved it. I gave it a 4.5 star rating. I thought it was a phenomenal story about life and love and loss and everything. And yeah, I loved it. Another book that if you're intimidated to read, I highly recommend trying it out and maybe you'll like it more than you think you would. Next, we have Mad Honey by Jodi Pico. And this is absolutely a favorite book of the year for me. I feel like when I'm thinking about these books, like favorite books of the year, it's books that I am constantly talking about, constantly wanting to put in videos, constantly wanting to recommend. And Mad Honey is like the number one book for me in that category for this year. I absolutely loved it. I found it to be so good. It is kind of, it crosses genres in my opinion. Like it's a little bit romance, it's a little bit mystery, thriller, suspense, fiction, it has it all. And there was something in this book that was the most shocking twist of all time for me. I have never been so shocked. And maybe it's because I wasn't expecting a shock. Like, you know, when you read a thriller book, like you're expecting a twist. This was so unexpected that I was literally floored and it just made the entire book so good. I also think it's a wonderful story with lots of themes and things you can think about. It was eye-opening for me. I thought it was powerful, all of that good stuff. And just 
Honestly, it's probably like my second favorite book of the year. Next up is Emily Henry's Happy Place. And this is a book that was fine for me. It is completely middle of the road. Like I have talked about this book multiple times and like I just say it is so mid. Like I don't feel really negative. I don't feel really positive. I'm just like eh about it. And that's kind of how I feel about Emily Henry in general. Yeah. It was fine. Moving on, we have The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, and this was a book that I disliked. So, I will say that I kind of I kind of liked it. Like I enjoyed the story. It was very easy to read. I read it in probably 3 hours, but it was just way too YA for me. If you don't know, this is like a YA um, mystery thriller type of book. It's kind of like Criminal Minds, like it's a bunch of kids who have these supernatural abilities or natural abilities that help them solve crimes. So I thought it was a really interesting story and I can see why a lot of people love it, but for me, it just felt like too silly. And like, I don't know, I just, it kind of felt like a waste of my time or not a waste of my time, but I just didn't want to spend my time reading the rest of the series. And it was just like, I couldn't get past the youngness of it to me. And yeah, I do enjoy other YA books. There was just something about this that felt too, it felt like I was too old to be reading it and it just it didn't it just didn't do it for me. I can see why it's like addictive and fun and easy because it is addictive, fun and easy, but yeah, I would say I just liked it. Okay, next up is Strange Sally Diamond, and this is a favorite book of the year by far. I loved this book so much. So this is a really good thriller. It is a very unique thriller. I honestly can't even like tell you what the plot is without giving anything away, but it was just so good. Like I just, it wowed me. I closed the book and I literally said out loud, oh my gosh, wow. I just, it's one of those books that I'm like, how did the author come up with this? It was like a pretty dark, intense thriller, I would say. It definitely deals with some sensitive topics as most thrillers do, but this leans a little bit in the heavier direction and it was just so good total five stars couldn't put it down incredible storyline incredible plot and such a unique read next we have the fury by alex michaelides this is another thriller and it was a book that i enjoyed i really liked it i thought it was fast paced short chapters i was like hooked from the very beginning wanting to know what happened it's like a whodunit type of thriller that takes place on a greek island and i wouldn't say i loved it just because it just like didn't do anything crazy in terms of like thrillingness or mysteryness or shocking reveal or anything like that um, so I didn't love, 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 but I definitely enjoyed myself with it and I had a good time reading it and I would recommend it. Next we have Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood and this is another book that I loved and I feel like just to save time, I'm gonna say exactly what I said about Check In Mate and Love on the Brain. I love Allie Hazelwood. I think her books are super fun, quirky. I think they are good romances. They have like good plots in addition to the falling in love. This one specifically, I remember being like really realistic. Like I truly believed in like the trajectory of their relationship. I also liked the academic plot in it. Overall, had such a good time and I was very surprised because it was the first Allie Hazelwood book that I had loved. So I feel like that made it even better for me because I was like, wow, I'm so shocked. I'm loving this so much. So. Yes, I feel like all of Allie Hazelwood books are just books that I really love. Speaking of Allie Hazelwood, we have another book and that is Bride. That is my favorite book of the year, or not my favorite book of the year. It is one of my favorite books of the year, without a doubt. I was reading this and again, I just got that five star feeling the entire way through. I didn't want to put it down. I thought it was like so addictive, bingeable. It like had me giddy like this one is so good this is one of my like guilty pleasure type of books it's like one of those romances that you just eat up it's like a little bit silly and you know that while you're reading it like this definitely doesn't compare to my hello beautiful or markably bright creatures or tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow it is like the complete opposite end of the spectrum for me it is just like complete enjoyment flipping through the pages so fast, eating up the story. And this is a paranormal romance between a vampire and a werewolf. It's also an arranged marriage romance. And I just loved it. It made my heart hurt. It gave my heart butterflies. It did all the good things, like kicking my feet, you know, those type of romances. And I feel like this is like a good portrayal or representation of like another type of book I like. I love like a little bit of that taboo romance. I love a mafia romance. I love like a macho man. I feel like this is that alpha werewolf. You know the vibe I'm talking about. So I loved that book so much. Okay, next up is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. And I would say that I disliked this book. I went into it thinking I would really love it because I know a lot of people love this book. They gave it five stars. They think it's amazing. They think it's phenomenal, like mind blowing five stars. And I just didn't feel that way about it. It was my first ever science fiction book. And I kind of just like didn't love it that much. It's also described as mystery thriller, but like I didn't find it very thrilling at all. I kind of felt it to be repetitive. If you know, you know. There's like a middle chunk of the book that the same thing is happening over and over and over again. And it just, it just didn't do it for me. I feel like I was reading it and I was just like, wow, no, 
I'm not feeling how everyone else felt about it. So I do want to read a different Blake Crouch or a different science fiction book just to like see more of that genre. But I would say I disliked it or it's definitely like one of my least favorite books of the year so far. Next we have Ready or Not by Cara Bastone and I think that this is going to just be a book that was fine. So this is another accidental pregnancy romance. Like I said, I love that romance trope, but I think that this one was just fine for me because to me it read like a women's fiction or a literary fiction with a sprinkle of romance. And what I love about those books is like the super cute romance that gives me butterflies and makes me swoon. And this didn't do that. I did like it. So I would say that this one toes the line between books I enjoyed and books that were fine, but like I feel like it was fine. It could really go in books I enjoyed, but I'm just gonna keep it in books that were fine for now because we are getting closer to the end. I'm gonna have to make some cuts to give even 10, so I'm just gonna put it there. Next is A Court of Silver Flames, and this is honestly kind of tricky. It is the final book in the Akatar series so far, and overall, like, I am not obsessed with Akatar. Like, I can't tell if I liked it. I did really like it. I would say I even loved some of the books, but I can't tell if I loved it because everyone else loved it. Like, I don't know if I loved it just because of all the hype, you know what I mean? So I don't know, I feel kind of wishy-washy on Akatar. and this book definitely, it's like, I definitely can't look back and wholeheartedly say I loved it. Like it was a little bit hard to get through, a little bit boring, a little bit repetitive, you guys know. And so I'm just gonna say I enjoyed it. I think that's where it's gonna go. I feel like that's a good fit for it. Okay, we are coming up on the last three books, so we are almost done here. We have The Way I Am Now by Amber Smith, which is the second book in a little YA duet, and I loved this book. I gave it five stars. It's kind of like an emotional fiction romance story about a young girl's journey through a trauma that she endured and her healing and all that stuff, and I think it's going to be a book I loved. I don't think it's going to be a favorite book of the year. Just, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I loved it. I loved this entire duet, and I highly recommend it. Next, we have Magnolia Parks and we have Daisy Hate. So the first two books in the Magnolia Parks universe. And I don't know, it's kind of tricky for how I feel about Magnolia Parks. I don't think I love either. I think Magnolia Parks, I definitely like less. Magnolia Parks is definitely a book I enjoyed. I don't love, love, love. It's definitely a book I enjoyed. Daisy Hates is closer to being able to fit into a book that I loved. But I think again, it's just a book I enjoyed. It is close. It toes the line, but it's not a book I absolutely love. However, Daisy Hates I definitely like more than Magnolia Parks. Um, so actually Daisy Hates could go in books I loved. I'll just put it here for now because I definitely enjoyed it significantly more than Magnolia Parks. So I feel like that is good for the initial tier ranking of the 50 books I've read so far in 2024. But now I'm gonna do it differently so that I have 10 books in each category. And I'm gonna have to make some, you know, harsh judgments here because as you can tell it's not going to be a perfect representation but I feel like I can think critically and really nail down like my bottom 10 my middle 10 my top 10 all of that so that is what we're going to do right now okay so so far we have how many books in the favorite books of the year we have one two three four five six seven eight. we have eight books in the favorite books of the year so what I'm going to do is move two from books I loved to favorite books of the year and my initial thoughts are it could be one of the Abby Jimenez books it could be Caught Up by Liz Tom Ford, or it could be Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood because that is my favorite Allie Hazelwood. I think it's gonna be Caught Up because that is actually a five star. I don't think any of the other books in the books I loved category are a five star. So I'm just gonna put Caught Up there because I loved it enough to give it a five star and I'm not like super casual with my five star. So I feel like it deserves to be up there. And then one more, I think. That was kind of hard to choose, but I think it's gonna be yours truly because I did rate it 4.75 and I rated Just for the Summer 4.5 and I remember saying that I liked yours truly more. So that is going to be that. Okay, so now we have 13 in the books I loved category. So we're gonna to have to move three down or you know what? I guess I should start with books I enjoyed, which we have 13 in and I guess I should move those around first. I guess what we're gonna do is move three of the books that were fine into books that I disliked. That's definitely gonna be Wild Love going to the books I disliked. I think it's gonna be Queen of Nothing. And I think it's gonna be In a Jam. That makes sense to me. Now remember, these are not books that I 100% dislike because if I was going on my initial thoughts, they would be in books that were fine. But for sake of this video, they're going into the bottom 10. I feel like at this point of the video, you can ignore the writing on the side and it's just like my bottom 10, then my second bottom 10, middle 10, etc. Okay, so now we have four books in the books that were fine category. So we need to move six down from books I enjoyed. Okay. Hmm. 
a cord of silver flames could be moved down. Crazy, but it's true. I also think that funny story can be moved down because like I said, I was a little bit wishy-washy when I put it there to begin with. I think I'll just move psychology of money to give myself an easy one, even though it was definitely more than fine, but that's gonna be easier. Um, you guys, it's too hard. <laughs> okay, books that were fine. No, you know what? Ruthless Vows is definitely gonna go down. Ruthless Vows is gonna go down. So now I need two more, two more. I really, I did enjoy Yellow Face. I enjoyed Final Girls. My last innocent year, I do remember really enjoying at the end, so. I think I'm just gonna do The Wicked King and The Cruel Prince. I don't know if that's 100% accurate in how I feel, but it's an easy choice. So that's what I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make that choice. Okay, now we're gonna move some books I loved down to books I enjoyed. Love on the Brain is the first one sticking out to me to move down because while I did really enjoy it, it was definitely my least favorite Abby Hazelwood. So that's gonna go down into books I enjoyed. I also think I'm gonna move Daisy Hates back down because we just talked about this. That was kind of towing the line. We have The Push by Baby Lizzie Blake's Best Mistake, Winter Garden, One of Us is Dead, Just for the Summer, The Book of Lost Names, Check and Made, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, Love Theoretically, and The Way I Am Now. And one of them needs to be pushed down. <sighs> Another hard choice, but let's see, let's see. Okay, so it's either gonna be One of Us is Dead or The Push, which are both thrillers. And hmm, I actually think it's gonna be The Push. Now that's interesting because I think I rated One of Us is Dead less than The Push. But no, 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 it's gonna be One of Us is Dead. Okay, I'm moving One of Us is Dead down. Yeah, and the reason why I moved it down into a book I enjoyed, it's because this is how, like, I didn't rate it a four star. I rated it a 3.75 because it felt a little, like, silly at the end, like, too unserious. And I know I said that's, like, kind of the selling points of it. Like, it's very enjoyable, fun, easy, quick. But I'm lowering it down, and I lowered down its rating when I rated it because it was just a little bit unserious, a little bit unrealistic, a little bit silly. And there was like a twist at the end that I think made the whole thing a little bit, like I said, a little more unserious. Okay, so that is that. This is my tier ranking if I'm forcing 10 into each of the categories. So now we have my bottom 10 books of the year, my top 10 books of the year, and everything else in between. Like I said, you can kind of ignore the words on the side at this point because it's not exactly how I feel about all of the books, but I think that this is a good ranking for how I feel. I definitely feel very confident about my top 10 books, my favorite books of the year being Hello Beautiful, Pretty Girls, and Ember in the Ashes, Remarkably Bright Creatures, None of This Is True, Mad Honey, Strange Sally Diamond, Bride, Caught Up, and Yours Truly. Like, I do feel really confident in that, and I feel very confident in the bottom 10. So Taming Seven, When in Rome, First Lie Wins, Say you Swear, Grace and Thou, The Naturals, Dark Matter, Wild Love, Queen of Nothing, and In a Jam. That feels 100% right to me. Like none of the other books I would wanna move down or move up, but the middle three rows, that is where some things get wishy-washy and that's kind of where I can't make up my mind. Honestly, it's hard for me to rate a lot of those books in the middle anyway. I get very in the weeds with my ratings. I love a 4.25, I love a 3.75, but like I said, I do feel good about this tier ranking and I have had a very good first 50 books of the year. I can honestly say that there's only like three books in here that I actively dislike, even my bottom 10. There is something in most of them that I can say that I liked. So it's been a great year so far and, and I cannot wait to read another 50 books or more and reach my 100 book goal for the year. So I think that's all for me for now. This video has been very long. I'm pretty positive it will be very long. I don't know for a fact, but I feel like you guys have been hearing me chat and yap on for a while now. So if you're still here, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe for more book content. I'll see you in the next one.